what are the main reasons behind the disappearance of the Saraswati River and how is it associated with, de- with debunking the Aryan invasion theory? So, uh, until 10, 20 years ago, until 10 or 15 years ago, every Indian historian, every Indian scientist would claim, every other foreign historian also would claim that the Saraswati River is just a myth. It's a myth these stupid Hindus have created. There is no such river. It's all mythology. But then it clearly emerged that there is indeed an enormous dry riverbed in Western India, which starts from the Himalayas and goes all the way to the uh, so-called Arabian Sea. Yeah, This dry riverbed does exist. It is visible in satellite images. It is an enormous river, wider and greater than the, in, than the Sindhu Indus River and greater than any other river in the Sapta Sindhu region. So it is clear that this river exists where exactly where our so-called myths said it existed. So it does exist. Now it is, in, these people no longer make the claim it's a mythological river. It is there. And now even in scientific journals like Nature, etc., people are, have begun, scientists have begun calling it the Saraswati River in research papers. So now it is established beyond any doubt this river existed. Now it is known that this river dried out around 1500 BC or thereabouts, plus or minus 500 years. So it dried out around that time. Why did it dry out? It dried out because of the Mono, because of the gradual decline of the Indian monsoon, that's number one, and maybe also because of some seismic event uh, in the Himalayas. So the Indian monsoon about six, seven, eight thousand years ago was was much heavier than what it is today. And it is this monsoon, this extremely heavy Indian monsoon, uh, Indian monsoon that fed the Saraswati River. It was an enormous river, enormous river, very powerful, very very strong river. So it was fed by the Indian monsoon. It was Its origin was in the Himalayas, so it was fled by glacial meltwater from the Himalayas. But as it came downwards, southwards, it was, felt, uh, it was fed by the Indian monsoon rains. And that's why it was such a great river, enormous river. Now about 6000 BCE and thereabouts, and after that, the Indian monsoon started declining. In over two, three, four thousand years, it declined so much that this river went half dry. And it became a seasonal river and eventually it dried out in, in much of its river bed. Even today, it does exist in northern India. It is a seasonal river. It is called the Ghaggar Hakra River. Ghaggar Hakra River. You can check out my article in which I have given the details. So that is the reason behind the disappearance of the Saraswati River. The main reason is the decline of the Indian monsoon. And there could also have been some uh, seismic event in the Himalayas, which is a seismically active zone, which may have diverted its source. So these are some of the reasons. The primary reason, the major river reason is the decline of the Indian monsoon. Now, how is this river associated with debunking, debunking the Aryan invasion theory? So one of the main central claims of the Aryan invasion theory is that the, the invasion happened around 1500 BC. And the Rig Veda was, was, was written after that. So the accepted date of the writing of the Rig Veda by all mainstream eminent historians is about 1300 BC. Definitely after 1500, 1500 BC. So according to this theory, according to all these wonderful mainstream historians, the Rig Veda was written about 1500 or 1300 BCE, not before that, 100% not before that. Now here's the funny thing. In the Rig Veda, there is there are so many mentions of the Saraswati River. There are entire sections devoted to this river. There are so many mentions of this river. And the way this river is described is striking. This river is called the mother of floods. It is called a loudly roaring river. It is depicted as an enormous, mighty river that could destroy uh, surrounding regions. It was the mother of floods. It was a loudly roaring river. So the depiction of this river in the Rig Veda is clearly the depiction of an enormous river in its prime. It is not the depiction of a river that is declining or which has gone half dry or a seasonal river. It is a depiction of an enormous river in its prime. And the last time this river was in its prime was about 6000 BC, 8000 years before today. So how did this book 
that, that was written in 1500 or 1300 BC, remember events from 6000 BC. And why was it depicting those events as, as if they were happening when the book was written? This is something the Aryan invasion theorists can never explain. So this clearly demonstrates that the Rig Veda, the oldest literature that is written in, 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 in Indian uh, history, the oldest known literature in the world is the Rig Veda. It is clear that this literature, the Rig Veda was written when the Saraswati was in its prime and the last time it was in its prime was around 6000 BC. So the Rig Veda is clearly a book that was written closer to 6000 BC than to 1500 BC. And this completely demolishes the Aryan invasion theory because this is the central claim, one of the central claims of the Aryan invasion theory. So this is how the Saraswati and, and uh, how it disappeared and when it was last in its prime, this is in a way quite central to debunking this fake claim of the Aryan invasion. So you can read my article and check it out. I mean, I've given some details about that in there.